All right. My name is Noah Lynch, and I'm in 10th grade. This year, for my science project, I decided to use male to terminate Staphylococcus and Clostridium tetani. So honey beekeeping has been in my family since my grandfather was just about 15 years old, and he's kept bees on his property in Florida ever since. Um, my mom recently got some bees in our backyard a few years ago, and just last year I decided to take up an interest. So over the summer, I started researching bees, and I found that honey has very strong antibacterial pro 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 properties, and it's been used for thousands of years for medical purposes. I did some more research, and I found out that I, there weren't many tests on Staphylococcus or Clostridium tetani, so I decided to put it to the test for my science project. So. The problem was, can wild honey be used as a natural antibacterial to keep plushrooms from being infected by Staphylococcus and Clostridium tetani? My hypothesis was, if honey is added to the tube of auger with Clostridium tetani or Staphylococcus in it, then it would slow the growth of the bacteria in the broth. The independent variable for this test was the amount of honey added to the bacteria. I did three drops in one and six in the other. The dependent variable was the abating of, of growth or death of bacteria colonies, and the controls were everything else, like the soy broth, the temperature of the incubator, the bacteria samples, the size and type of test tubes. So the materials I used, I used six small glass test tubes. I used a soy auger broth, um, a live Clostridium tetani, a live Staphylococcus. We used an inoculating loop. Um, a heating plate, a scale, an incubator, a burner to clean the inoculating loop, um, an oven mitt, a magnetic stir, and local honey from my backyard, as well as a dropper. So the first thing we did was we mixed the soy auger solution according to the directions, and then we poured that out into clean test tubes as evenly as possible, about three-fourths full. We then used the burner to clean off the inoculating loop. Next, we dip the loop into the bacteria and then into one of the test tubes to inoculate the broth. We repeated that step and took those steps until we inoculated all of the tubes and switching halfway through so we get three of each. We then let the bacteria grow in an incubator for about a day before we added the honey. So we added three drops to one Clostridium and one Staphylococcus and six to one of each. We then left it in the incubator and checked daily for signs of slowing bacteria or death. So um, the data key, the plus sign determines the level of growth observed. So one would be like a little bit of growth, two would be more, and three would be a lot, and so on. So um, Clocon is my abbreviation for Clostridium control, Staphcon is Staphylococcus control. Um, Clo1 and Staph1 would be the Clostridium and Staph with three drops of honey, and then the Clo2 and Staph2 would be the bacteria with six drops of honey. So here are the data tables. As you can see, for the controls, it continued to grow at a uh, steady rate. And then at the Clostridium 1 and Staph 1 um, grew, and then it started to decline and had it flatlined. And then the um, twos stayed with the 1, but then dropped on day 6. Here are the data tables. Um, uh, as you can see, the bacteria grew quickly for the controls. And um, over here, I have the appearance for them. Uh, as they grew, they started to get cloudier, and a ring at the top started to become thicker. And it, um, some flakes started to appear near the end of the experiment. With the three drops of honey, it grew consistently until about uh, November 20th, when it started to decline, it was pretty cloudy, and then it, the cloudiness started to um, disappear, and the ring started to get smaller. With the six drops of honey, it grew almost the same as the first uh, one with the honey, but it cleared up a lot more, and there were only small uh, flakes left in. So um, based on my data, and my, my hypothesis was supported. I could tell that honey slowed down the growth of bacteria because as the week went on, compared to the controls, the bacteria with honey did not get as cloudy and the rings did not get as thick. Um, eventually, the ones with the honey did clear up 
significantly and the rings were smaller. As shown in the data, the, data, the honey didn't seem to slow down the growth of the bacteria until about um, the last 48 hours and by then it would dramatically reduce the growth. So here are some pictures of the bacteria after growing for a day. Here's Clostridium and then the staph over here. Here is day three after growing with the honey and then day four. Bibliography.